following the Paladin Prophecy, same in the series. Hello, full book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this great book called The Alliance by Mark Frost himself. And well, let's get right on to it. So, basically, last time, last time, if you haven't, if you don't really understand what I'm gonna say, you're not gonna understand what I'm gonna say if you haven't watched either the review video for episode 1, which is, you know, easily findable on my channel, Bookquester, or you have to just have to read the book, which is even better. And let's continue on. Okay, summary. Um, basically, there's this picture, okay? There's this picture from back in the 90s, and, and back in, like, the 1940s or something, and it's, the, it's a picture where Hobbes, their main enemy, is taken. And by the way, it's 2007 now, so he should be over 100. Except he isn't, and he looks pretty much middle-aged. He looks very, very young, and he's also not very, not entirely human. He seem, he looks like a hybrid. And in the picture, we see another person, Nepstead. Nepstead, Happy Nepstead, is a is one of the staff of the school. So they go and they ask him, and they are also pretty sure that Nepstead is not human either. He has some sort of tentacles in his body, and he can wrap pe wrap wrap the tentacles around people and attack them. And what Nepset says, he says that he will tell them the truth if he br if they bring him the key to open the door that he is trapped in. So the kids make a plan. Our good old main character Will West, AJ, and by the way. Will and Brooke are in a relationship, but Brooke's been treating him weirdly. And then, of course, there's another kid named Elise, who's also kind of in a semi-weird relationship with Will, which is... Jeez, are you stupid, bro? Anyway, <laughs> and, and of course, there's our dear Nick, who is an excellent master of martial arts. And there you go, those are our kids, and they make a plan to get into the place where Nepset's key is, Nepset's key is, and it's in the tunnels, or deeper in to the tunnels. And he says something about a cathedral and a hospital, and apparently the key is kept in the hospital. Okay, I'm I'm really not following. There's a there's a cathedral and a hospital underground. What does that even mean? Well, we'll find out soon enough. So what? What our dear, what our dear Will West does, he basically gets himself hired to the castle. Why? Because, as we all know, the tunnels be are beneath the castle, and the only way to go down is the castle. So what they do is that they go to the castle, and Will gets himself hired. Then, they make a plan. Nick first swims over into the lake, over to the island, and stops the security camera from turning. Then, the rest of them boat over there with AJ's specially made canoe. And so, so together, they, they execute the plan, and with a bit of a couple close calls... Yeah, okay, that's... <sighs> I would cut that out, but I'm not gonna edit this, because I am lazy and I'm sleepy. Okay, so, anyway... So let's continue. And basically, it's so they get themselves beneath the castle into the tunnels. And they go deeper and deeper, and they find some sort of door. And at the door, they try to open it, but it's locked. And Elise, using her ability to, to manipulate sound, kind of makes like a key with sound to open the door, to pick the door. And, and then they finally get themselves in there, and after going through this creepy hallway, they come into an underground city. And this is no ordinary underground city. In fact, it doesn't seem to be inhabited by human beings. No, no, no. It seems that creatures of great size and ferocity had lived there. And there had been a war there. It was in ruins. There were many bones and many, many different dead bodies. And these dead bodies were almost Fossils, no, they were fossilized. And so they go in even more, even more, and they find the cathedral. And in the middle of the cathedral, there seems to be some sort of human sacrifice altar. 
when they all stood on it, they were carried down into a pit. A pit of bones. Of sacrifices that the monsters had sacrificed to their god, whatever it is. And down there, they found some sort of facility. The hospital, as Nebstead called it. And inside, they found even more horrors. The Knight of Charm again, the ones who were serving the things in the Never Was, the old ones, as Dave called them. And they were here, and they were pretty much really evil, and they had performed horrific experiments on the older knights. Experiments that made them into something else. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're guessing Hobbs, the fire bones guy, and Napstead, the squid guy. They had been they have been manipulated. Their DNA had been manipulated by getting the DNA out of the old bleached bones down in the cathedral. And that's how they got their abilities. And from the from the around from the couple students who had gotten that DNA injection, only they had survived. And now, the new Paladin Prophecy, this new project, they had completed the formula, and now they could create new Paladins, or superhumans, with ease. And after finding this, well, after finding the key, that's what Nepstead told them anyway. And then, they were captured by Hobbs. And they were captured, and and basically, Will realizes that someone knew that they were going to the hospital. They had been chased after all. And someone had gave them away, but who was it? There was a spy. And he knew that it would be one of his friends, and one of his friends would come up to him and try to convince him that to appeal to his better nature so that he would make the right choice, or the choice that the knights wanted him to take. And shocking truth, it was Brooke. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, you remember in uh, in the book one when Brooke was captured and was being tortured? I thought that Brooke would be like the bad guy in that situation. She's like pretending to be tortured and captured, and she's just gonna like you know betray them in the last second. And that I thought it would happen in book one, but she but she didn't betray Will, and I was like, huh, okay. But there's this really triangle relationship in book two, where the main character is in a weird little... Well, basically, Brooke is with kind of with um, the main character, Will, and Elise is also with kind of with the main character, Will. So I was like, huh, this triangle is very awkward, but I feel like if the author made this triangle, maybe one of the love, either Brooke or Elise, will be remo- either removed or kind of weirdly like betrayed or something and that's why I kind of caught on back to the Brooke theory and then of course it was revealed that Brooke was helping the knights all along. And then a shocking reveal that I did not see, come, uh, see coming. The leader of the Knights of Charmeline, the leader of this organization is Old Greenwood himself. Grandfather of Will West. And that's where the book ends. And I'm really, really hyped for book three. Except the fact that my parents aren't letting me read the next book until I read a real sufficient book, which is kind of ridiculous. But, you know, it's whatever. And I guess, well, as soon as possible, I will read the third book. Well, after a probably realistic fiction book review. And, well... I go always, your book quester and book quester. It is an epic, awesome book. And like always, goodbye and have a great day. I would highly recommend this book. And yeah, have a good day. What am, I'm repeating myself, right? Yeah.